Good morning, this is Pamela Bluewater for J&S Biblical Productions, July 3rd, 1934 in Warsaw, Poland, at the Warsaw Radium Institute. We have searched the world to find a person that illustrates Matthew chapter 7, verse 20, from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, Wherefore by the fruits you shall know them. Jesus spoke these words to show a foolproof test to tell the difference between a false prophet and a true prophet. The meaning of the passage of verses 15 to 20 is to emphasize that the tree produces the fruit and a good tree can't produce bad fruit, verse 18. Therefore, JNS has chosen Madame Marie Curie to represent such a good tree. Welcome Marie Curie. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. Marie, we know you by a superficial list of your major discoveries. I don't know if these are all of them, to name a few of your fruits as we call them in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, you discovered radioactivity, the elements polonium and radium, and a colorless radioactive gas known as radon used for sterilizing infected tissue of injured World War I soldiers. You went on to receive two Nobel Prizes, one in chemistry and one in physics. You were the first woman to receive a degree in physics, the first woman to obtain a Nobel Prize and a chair at the prestigious Sorbonne University in Paris. By some, you are called the mother of modern physics, and President Warren G. Harding presented you with one gram of radium collected in the US. I think our audience would be most interested in what led to the discovery of radium. So, Marie, tell us where you began. I guess the beginning came when I decided to look into the properties of uranium rays as a possible field of research for a thesis. A physicist by the name of Henry Becquerel in 1896 discovered that uranium salts emitted rays resembling x-rays. The radiation seemed to arise spontaneously from uranium itself. I hypothesized that the radiation was not the result of some interaction of molecules, but must come from the atom itself. I was right. Well, this is getting exciting. Now, let's get to the major discovery of radium. I'll try to simplify. The mineral pitch blend that contains uranium was four times as active as uranium itself. So I concluded that uranium minerals must contain a small amount of another substance more active than uranium that emits radiation. It took a ton of pitch blend to grind out with a mortar and pestle a tenth of a gram of radium chloride. This was finally done in 1902. In 1910, I isolated pure radium metal and what's the major significance of this? My husband Pierre and I published 32 scientific papers from 1898 to 1902 that proved that disease tumors forming cells when exposed to radium were destroyed faster than healthy cells. And the names, so where did you get them? I named the first polonium after my native homeland Poland and radium after a Latin word for rays. Marie, what in the world motivated you to continue your research? I have a saying, nothing in life is to be feared, it is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. All right. We would like our viewers to know that you went on to receive two Nobel Prizes, one in physics, one in chemistry, and you were the first woman to receive any Nobel Prize. What else? I should mention that I went on to become a professor at the University of Paris and later years, I headed the Radium Institute in 1914. In 1910, I successfully isolated radium and defined an international standard for radioactivity emissions that was named for myself and Pierre. It is called the Curie. It is based on the number of disintegrations per second in one gram of radium-226. Um, I'm the receptionist here. Um, can you help me understand what radioactivity is? Oh, that's easy to explain. Radioactivity is a spontaneous nuclear transformation of an unstable atom that often results in the release of radiation. So, how do you measure radioactivity? Oh, that's simple. For example, radium-226, which I discovered, has a half-life of 1,600 years. That's the time it takes for half of its atoms to decay into something else. Therefore, in 1,600 years, one gram of radium-226 <coughs> will turn into half a gram of radium-226 and half a gram of one of its decay products, which are radon-222, 
polonium-218, and finally, lead-214, which isn't radioactive, so it won't decay. After another 1,600 years, only a quarter of a gram of the original radium-226 will remain. Thank God. I can't wait. Um, I think I'm going to excuse myself and go lay down before I start to decay. <laughs> finally, tell us about your contributions to the battlefield in World War I, helping soldiers. Yes, I procured x-ray equipment and generators, and my daughter Irene helped me install 20 mobile radiological vehicles and another 200 radiological units in field hospitals in the first year of the war. The radon in the needles I produced were used to sterilize infected tissue. All right. I think we have given our viewers a very good example of Matthew chapter 7, verse 20, as a good tree that produces good fruit. In summary, radioactivity saved lives. Thank you, Marie. I hope your Radium Institute in Warsaw is successful and congratulations on being elected to the International Atomic Weights Committee with Albert Einstein. This is Pamela Bluewater for JNS Biblical acknowledging to our viewers that because of Marie Curie, we have in been introduced to the atomic age. Marie Curie visited Poland for the last time in early 1934. A few months later, on July 4th, 1934, she died in a sanitarium in France from anemia believed to have been contracted from her long-term exposure to radiation. The damaging effects of radiation were not known at the time of her work, which had been carried out without safety measures later developed. She had carried test tubes around in her pocket containing radioactive isotopes and stored them in her desk drawer, remarking on the faint light that the substances gave off in the dark. She never knew the health risk of radiation exposure. What are your thoughts on today's story? We'd like to know. So, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel, JNS Authentic Biblical Productions. Whether it's the Word of God through parables, true stories illustrating parables, or true stories in the life of Jesus Christ with commentary, you can see them all by subscribing to the most comprehensive collection of videos of biblical stories for you and your family. Have a blessed day.